Kususampuna, I'm Tiki Ongmo. Welcome to the e-learning project. This is economics lesson for key stages four and five. Key stages four is for class, classes nine and 10. Key stage five is for classes 11 and 12. This concept is very basic for economics. I understand that there are so many students who have not taken up economics at the lower grades. So therefore, the topic I'm going to discuss in this lesson is very basic concepts of economics. So to begin with the lesson, I have topic to be discussed in today's lesson, such as resources, then production, utility, consumption, and income. So these are the basic concepts of economics that all economics students have to learn. Let us look at the objectives first. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to define resources. You should be able to classify resources, define production, explain the factors of production, give the meaning of utility, explain the creation of utility, define consumption, give the meaning of income. So with this, we are going to look at the first concept that is resources. What are resources? Have you heard the term resources before? Okay, resources are anything which can be used for production of goods and services. I have some of the resources displayed here for you all. The first one I have is garrison, screwdriver, chalk, log, coal, water, and rock. So these are some of the examples of resources. Now, I'm going to segregate resources into two categories. Okay, now, you'll see I have grouped resources into two categories. Now, can you tell me what you could see the difference between these two categories? In, in first category, we have kerosene, screwdriver, and chalk. In the second category, we have log, coal, water, and rock. So now, we are going to discuss types of resources. So these flow charts indicates there are different types of resources. So we have basically two types of resources. That is natural resources and human-made resources. So now, can you tell me which one is natural resources from here? Okay, this category is called as natural resources, such as law, coal, water, and rock. These are called as natural resources because they are found naturally and they are also called as free gift of nature. Now I have the next category. Now by looking at this example, you would understand that all these resources are man-made resources. So man-made resources are those resources which are made by human beings. We, are, we also call it as human-made resources such as kerosene, screwdriver, and chalk. Okay, now you know that there are two categories of resources, that's natural resources and human-made resources. So now, we are going to look at two categories of natural resources. Now I'll segregate resources into two categories again. Okay, now we have coal here and water here two categories of resources. Now, can you tell me what differences you see here? Coal and water. Water is an example of renewable resources. Can you tell me why water is an example of renewable resources? Okay. Since water can be used again and again without being depleted, water is an example of renewable resources. 
Renewable resources are those resources which can be used again and again and which should not get depleted as we use. Next, we are going to look at non-renewable resources. Coal is an example of non-renewable resources because as we use, coal will get depleted, it will get exhausted, and we cannot reuse coal again and again. So therefore, non-renewable resources are those resources which we cannot use again and again, and it will get depleted. Now you know that natural resources are of two categories, that is renewable resources and non-renewable resources. Okay, now we have already discussed that resources are anything which can use for production of goods and services. Now we are going to look at the concept production. What is production? Can you see things which are produced at your home? Okay, production is the process of making goods and services using the factors of production. Production creates utility. So therefore, production is a very important concept in economics. So now, when we talk about production, production can be both commercial and then subsistence. Commercial production is the production of goods and services on a large scale, mainly for trading. On the other hand, subsistence production is produced in a small quantity, mainly for self-consumption. So, especially in our country, in the past, we have been practicing subsistence production. Now, with economic development, with a lot of growth taking place, we are moving into commercial production, meaning that we have a lot of production taking place in our country, which is mainly for sale. So now, in order to produce goods and services, factors of production plays a very important role in the production process. Now we are going to discuss about the factors of production one by one. So in economics, there are four factors of production, such as land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. So these are the four factors of production in economics. Now we are going to discuss land. Land includes all those free gifts of nature, such as land, forest, and minerals. So this factor of production is inelastic in nature. Now next is labor. Labor is human effort, both physical and mental, involved in the production of goods and services. So when we produce things, we need both physical as well as mental labor. So therefore, labor is also important part of factors of production. Now next we have is capital. Capital in economics refers to human-made factors such as machineries, tools, equipments, and factory buildings. So this capital will help us to further produce goods and services. The last one, the most important one we have is entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is the one who combines all the factors of production such as land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur makes the important decision in the firm and bears all the risks involved in the production. So therefore, entrepreneur is the most important factors of production amongst all the factors of production, not undermining land, labor, and capital. You should remember that there are four factors of production. All four factors of production are equally important in economics and equally important for the, uh, for the firm and then the producers. So now, the next concept we are going to look at is utility. Are you hearing for the first time? Especially those students who do not have economics background, because this concept is mostly used in context to the subject. Otherwise, in ordinary sense, we call it as utility. Sorry, we call it as satisfaction. So now, utility refers to the one satisfying power of commodity. So whatever commodity you consume, you get satisfaction. 
So this satisfaction you derive from the commodity is called as utility in economics. So now, production adds utility to the object. We have already discussed the concept of production. The reason why production is important in the economy is that production will add utility. So this utility is the satisfaction that we derive from the consumption of goods and services. So now, we have already discussed that production adds utility. So through production, utility can be created. So there are five different types of creation of utility. The first one I'm going to discuss is form utility. Form utility is changing the shape and size of wood. Example, table made from a piece of wood. For example, this is log, this is wood. So if this wood is left in the forest, no utility is being added. So now what we do is we convert this log into chairs and tables, into furnitures, into buildings. So this gives utility to the, to the object. So therefore, this kind of utility which is created is called as form utility. Now next we have place utility. Place utility is transferring goods from one place to another place. Example, transferring goods from factory to retail shops. Another example can be sand which is in the river bank. If it is being uh, taken to a construction site, it gives more utility. So there are so many examples you can think about. Now next we have is time utility. So time utility is when goods are made available at times when are not when are needed. For example, holding stock of goods until they are required and making things available on time are the examples of time utility. Then now next we have the service utility. Service utility is the provision of personal services of individual examples, services of doctors, services of teachers, engineers. For example, teacher comes to the class and then teach, teaches students. So this becomes the services which is being derived by the students and you get satisfaction. And then this type of satisfaction that you get is called a service utility. Now the last one we have is position utility. So position utility is the change of ownership of the property. Example, a person who owns a car but not able to drive. What happens is that person can hire the car to somebody who can drive and then utility is being added to the object. So this is an example of such utility. Okay now, children, we know that under the creation of utility, we have form utility, place utility, time utility, service utility, and then position utility. So now, next, I'm going to discuss about income. This income is also important concept of concept in economics. So now first let's look at the meaning. It is the earning an individual or company receives from all factors of production. So in our previous lesson we discussed about factors of production, right? So under production you know that there are factors of production, right? We discussed that there are four factors of production. So under four factors of production, all these four factors of production will give us return, which we call it as income. The return that we get from that four factors of production is the income that we get. So therefore, it is the sum of wages. Wages, we get it from the labor. Profits, we get being an entrepreneur. Interest, when we hire out the capital, we get interest. And rent is the compensation for land. So therefore, from all the factors of production that you rendered to the business community or the firms, the income that you receive is in the form of wages, profit, interest, and rent. So now, the last concept we are going to look at is consumption. Consumption is the act of consuming goods and services in the economy. So since you have the concept of production, we also discussed that production is the creation of goods and services. So whatever goods and services are being produced in the economy is being consumed. 
So the act of consuming all the goods and services are called as consumption. For example, when you go to hospital, you are provided with medical services. So this medical services is an example of consumption. So therefore, consumption is also important concept in economics that you need to know. We have discussed many concepts in economics right now, especially the basic concepts. Now I have interesting questions for you all to explore yourself. Number one, can you think of some resources you see in your locality and classify them into natural, renewable, non-renewable, and human-made resources? What you can do is you can take your economics notebook and write it down in your economics notebook. The second question I have for you all is the resources have become scarce with development taking place in our country or elsewhere. So now, as an individual, how are you going to take care of those resources so that the resources are sustained? You can write at least five measures that you can take as an individual. Now next, which among the four factors of production you consider the most important factor and why? We have already discussed that there are four factors of production. Amongst four factors of production, which one is the most important factor of production? And then you need to justify. The last question. In our country, which production is being practiced more? You understand that now there are two types of production. That's subsistence production and then commercial production. So you'll have to tell which one is being practiced more and then which one is more beneficial to our economy. And then you'll ha also have to give the reasons. So now what I want you to do is that you'll have to take note of the questions and then write it in your economics notebook. Before we close the lesson, I'm going to recap what you have discussed in our earlier lesson. So the first concept we discussed is resources. Then we discussed production, we discussed utility, we discussed consumption, we discussed about income. So now you know that, you know about resources, you know about production, you know about utility, you know about consumption, and you know about income. So these are the basic concepts in economics. Now we have come to the end of the lesson. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson as much as I did. Thank you so much and bye-bye.